fancy when we have these guest speakers, new people come in. Mm -hmm. It's almost yeah. a shame they're not going to hear Bob because I, I truly, I like really it. am liking our lessons. Mm -hmm. Here's Coco. Well, I haven't talked to all week. I'm a bad daughter. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm staying till damn near 7 o'clock every night at work because we're down to two people. Check, check, okay. check, check, check. You going to tell them to stand if they're able? No? I'm just going to welcome. You can stand and jive if you want to. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. Welcome to Unity of the Hill Country, where we offer a positive path for spiritual living. Let us pray. We give thanks for this beautiful day full of possibilities. We feel God's presence and power in us and all around us. We are truly blessed. Feeling wholeness, we extend this blessing to everybody. We bless all people, regardless of what they believe or who they love. We know that there are many paths to God, many names for God, but only one God. And God is expressing through all creation. We come together this morning to experience and express the Christ spirit that dwells within each of us. And so it is. Amen. Amen. If you are joining us on Facebook from home, we would like to take a moment to say welcome and connect in consciousness. Feel free to comment and introduce yourselves. This is our time to be together and share in love. Feel free to post and to tweet about unity of the Hill Country, but please silence your cell phones so as to not disturb our gathering. Unity is a global, inclusive, spiritual community. We offer practical, uplifting resources to help people of all faiths apply positive spiritual principles. Unity provides a positive alternative to negative religious experience. Please join me in affirming our mission and vision statements together to live consciously, celebrating the divine potential in all. As well as our statement of faith, there is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe God, the good, the omnipotent. 
The Daily Word helps keep the unity movement connected worldwide since 1924. This week's reader is Norma Leonard. Good morning. The Christ candle is lit, I think. <laughs> As we join together this morning with Daily Word readers around the world. The phrase for today is peace creates beauty in the world. Would you repeat that with me, please? Peace creates beauty in this world. An artist creates beauty out of a spectrum of shades and hues, and the diversity of color adds to the depth of the artwork. In this same manner, the differences in the world show the possibility of splendor when combined in the right way. I envision a world in which all people are accepted exactly as they are. And I set an intention to practice and facilitate goodwill toward others. I behold the world around me and find example of people and cultures blending and mixing in magnificent ways. The potential for peaceful interaction and coexistence are endless. Acts of kindness, honesty, and healthy communication paint pictures of harmony. As I choose non judgment and unconditional positive regard, I create peace in the world. And from Psalm 34, 14, depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. Would you join me again in our statement for today? Peace, peace creates beauty in this world. Thank you, Norma. The unity movement started in 1889 with answered prayer, a healing of a fatal illness. We are honored to pray with you. Place a request in our lobby prayer chest or email us. An usher will now bring the prayer chest forward as we prepare for meditation. Oh. And then what do I do? <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> Laughing is, is prayer in a way. Um, okay, great. Um, already done. So our, con our congregational song this week is Everlasting Arms. Um, please stand if you are able and join us in song. Please follow along with the words on the screen with the help of our choir. <clears throat> What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms.
it's been a while since I've been here, but oh boy, it's nice to be back. <laughs> I'm wearing a Unity t-shirt from the 1990s when we did a Heart of the Hills retreat at Camp Waldemar. Boy, those were neat. Uh, Unity churches from all over the state uh, would come to the hill country, Camp Waldemar, and where from 150 to 200 people showed up. And I got to teach the yoga, and we had national speakers, and it was just perfect. So uh, in commemoration of, uh, and it says, we make our own world. How true is that? And it comes from our beliefs, what we believe. The good news is everyone gets to believe what they want to believe. And Unity Church encompasses that idea. That's neat. <laughs> so, let's see what... Oh, first, there's a disclaimer. Unity Church and Reverend Bob are not responsible for what I'm saying. <laughs> They're, they they disavow any of that, and uh, and I'll be uh, be talking from breathe. Highly recommend this book. Can't go wrong. This can change our health on how we breathe. We're gonna be doing some breathing today, so don't stop. My ex, another wonderful book, Wisdom of the Ages by Wayne Dyer. Oh, man, can't go wrong with this one. Each chapter is four pages about great people from history. Give us some wisdom. Can't go wrong with this one. And then meditation as medicine, period. Yeah. I've lived in Curve for about 42 years. Uh, did Unity at the Pyramid in the 1970s and 80s. I've been teaching yoga for 35 years, going to retreats, seminars, and people keep giving me self-help books, which I don't know what that means, but <laughs> it's nice to share. It's nice to share. I'm not the guru of the wise ones. So don't follow me. I'm just offering words that I've got out of books and self-help and such. Uh, and let's try to have an experience. You know, it's one thing to hear and hear things, but how about have a feeling, have an experience? So we're going to, you're going to need to do the audience participation. You don't just sit there and listen to me. This is an audience participation thing, so don't make me, you know, call you out. Uh, and for the meditation, this is a poem written in 1999 after I got to teach a, a, a program at Unity Church in the, in the little house, the, our, first, our first Unity building. And uh, uh, a lady wrote this after, after the services. I went to church today. It was not a typical service. The congregation was a mix of suits and ties and proper silks and summer linens and sweat and tennis shoes. We were led in chant and yoga stretches. We sat in silence and were encouraged to be authentic in the moment. A stretch for such a proper place. We closed the service in song, Amazing Grace. No songbook was needed. The words etched in memory, like the star-spangled banner, came automatically to our lips. The serendipity was in seeing the overview of the wholehearted song, surrounded by high heel pumps, tennis shoes, lined up along the side of a barefooted congregation, stocking feet, tapping to the beat of the music. Amazing grace. So to start this meditation, would you, if you want to, please consider taking off your shoes. Ah, wiggle your toes. All right. Yeah, you know, let's get comfortable and let's just talk about it, okay? Focused attention. Meditation invites us to have focused attention. So what is that? Concentration, focused attention. So 
now as your feet are in contact with the earth, press to your big toe. Okay? Press to your little toe. Okay? Press to your heel. Okay? Press to your big toe, little toe, and heel. Press in that groundedness to the earth, a connectedness, as we are a part of co-creation. Relax your feet. Who knows the meditation sa ta na ma? Hey, isn't it great? Pretty easy, but again, it focuses your attention, asks you to think about it, because you've got to do heart co hand coordination. It goes like this, sa ta na ma. Let's practice. Sa ta na ma. Sa ta na ma. Whisper. Sa ta na ma. Once more. Sa ta na ma. Silently. Okay. That's the warm up. That's focused attention. When you're sitting there with your hand coordinated and you're thinking about sa ta na ma, this is the life cycle we're all going through. You know, the oak tree, my acorn, back to the oak tree, this life cycle we're all going through. So we're going to do it for a minute or so in our normal speaking voice. So you've got to talk it out, express yourself. We'll do it silently for a minute or so. Then we'll do, uh, 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 whisper, and then we'll do it silently. Okay? Any questions or answers? Okay, settle back in your chair. Palms facing up. To take your attention within, consider closing your eyes. Find your breath. Settle. Moisten your lips. Okay, here we go. Inhale to begin. Sa ta na ma, 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 sa ta na ma. Sata nama, sata nama, sata nama, sata nama, sata nama, sata nama. Sata nama, sata nama, sata nama. Whisper. Sata nama, sata nama, sata nama, sata. Silently to yourself, keep the hand mutra going.
sata nama sata nama sata nama sata nama sata nama sata nama inhale Exhale, ah. The uh, Alzheimer's and uh, dementia organization uh, supports this mod- this, med- this mantra, this meditation, and it makes you think about it makes you say it, and makes you coordinate your muscles. It's good for our memory, good for our focused, focused attention. So uh, you can find more about this, uh, uh, this Kriya. It's available. So there are a lot of beliefs that go around, that's for sure. And uh, uh, I'd go to, a, I went to retreats and seminars and such, and one of the, one of the uh, retreats and seminars I'd go to was from Ram Das, And there's a character, to say the least, and a neat guy. And uh, he talked about how most all of us are having to deal with stuff. There's stuff to deal with. Nowadays, with the corona and other stuff, and the economy and whatever else you want to lump on it, there's stuff to deal with. You know, like, phew. So Ram Das said, it's like in the old days when we saw with our eyes and we saw that the world was flat. It looked flat. It is flat. It's flat. But until we step back, until we got a bigger picture of it, maybe even when we went up to the mountaintop and got a better view, we could see that the world was round. So just a different perspective, a different way to look at things will help. And Ram Das said, dealing with your problems, not only stepping back physically, but stepping back mentally. So you look at it a little bit differently. And I thought that was pretty sage advice. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, uh, 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 just things look differently when you step back. Another retreat I would go to was by Pir Vilayat, a Sufi master. And, uh, that's where you get to get in a group and do Sufi dancing. And, and Pir Vilayat on Sundays would make five altars. And we would each pay homage and prayers with, the, with, with each in mind and use their song and, and such. And it was just a beautiful thing to expose yourself to the different thoughts that are available. And uh, Sufism, of course, is arms are wide open. Yeah, yeah. It's a mystical aspect of Islam. And uh, it was neat to experience those things. So Pir Vilayat said, expand your awareness. And he said, put one eye in a telescope, put the other eye in a microscope, and expand reality. What we see is but a thin slice of what's really going on. So to step back, like Ram Dass said, to expand your awareness, like Pir Vilayat said, these are good points. These are good points. Yeah, yeah. Marcus Bach, uh, Unity Minister, uh, saw he and his wife in uh, the Pyramid uh, Church in Houston and gave a beautiful talk and then did a handout. And he and his wife went around the world and stayed with different religions, organizations to experience what they had to present. And with that, they made this mandala, which shows all the great major religions of the world, their connotation, uh, uh, the, the Muhammad, Allah, Moses, Jehovah, uh, Jesus, God, uh, Dao, the, the, the Tao, Confucius, all of these. Uh, in fact, here's, here's Jehovah right here, this little square here, and when the Jehovah Witnesses used to come out to my house in the country and they would bring me their literature, 
I'd say, great, come on in, because I started had my literature. And, I st- <laughs> and, 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 I, and I'd show them, look, here, here's you, Jehovah, right here. That's part of it. But you need to look at the big picture. And, and, and they stopped coming. <laughs> they, they, stopped, they stopped coming. Oh, well. Leonardo da Vinci. Anybody as wise as Leonardo da Vinci, when he talks, I'm going to listen and pay attention. This is what Leonardo da Vinci said. Every now and then, go away. Have a little relaxation. For when you come back to your work, your judgment will be surer. Since to remain constantly at work will cause you to lose power of judgment. Go some distance away, because then the work appears smaller and more of it can be taken in at a glance, and the lack of harmony and proportion is more readily seen. That's pretty good advice, too. Again, step back. Look at it from a bigger perspective. And, think, and, and he's an, quite an artist, yeah, yeah. Sig Paulson. Who knows Sig Paulson? Sig and Janie Paulson, Unity Church, this big golden pyramid in Houston, pretty impressive. And uh, it was a Wednesday night, 1982. And going to church on Wednesday night, you know, that's special. Yeah. It was a rainy night in Houston. There wasn't that many people in church. I'm sitting on the third row. Sig is in front of the podium just talking to us. Go cry. He said, when is the last time you talked to the Lord your God? I'd been doing yoga. I'd gotten quiet. I'd gone within and gotten still. But he said, when is the last time you talked to the Lord your God? And I just kind of said to myself, I hadn't. He said, settle back in your chair. Close your eyes. Where are you going to find God? Within. Say hello. Hello, Lord. We hadn't spoken. Yeah. See, I'm going to cry. (laughs) You know, until you're ready to listen, you can't hear. Sig Paulson said, quoting from Tennyson, Alfred Lord Tennyson, Speak to him, thou for he hears, and spirit with spirit can meet. Closer is he than breathing, nearer than hands and feet. Well, that's right here. Little yoga guy heard him, and I felt moved. Yeah. At least 10 to 15 years later, I don't know how it happened because it wasn't me, to say the least. But in the little knoll in the side of, the side of the yard, my friend Pete Davis, with me helping and such and coordinating and such, we erected a big 10 foot tall cross. And on the face of the cross was written, Speak to him. Pretty special, to say the least. Now, it wasn't my idea to have a lighted cross in my front yard. No way. But it's not that, whatever, blatant. But it's pretty soft. We, had, I, I, I was married, we were married there. I had eight weddings there. A couple of memorial services. My mother's ashes are there. I hope mine go there. Thank you, Sig Paulson. Yeah, yeah. So let's use our body, our minds, and the spirit to try to go beyond our five senses. We have our five senses, but the sixth sense is the sense of proprioception. That's your connectedness. That's your spatial awareness. When you get dementia and Alzheimer's, you lose that connectedness. And so so there's things we can do to help our connectedness. 
has an idea. We know the feet thing. Press down on your feet. Yeah, they're the, they were there the whole time. But until we brought it into our consciousness, they were just there. So that's the idea of this idea. Bring it into consciousness. So let's try another one, okay? Audience participation. Raise a hand. High up. Come on, raise it up. Any questions? <laughs> Lower your hand down. Okay. Now, let's try again. Before you raise your hand, think about it. Now use your breath to inhale the hand up. Inhale it with your breath. Exhale it down with your breath. Okay, now close your eyes using your breath. Inhale your arm up. Now reach and breathe, stretch, feel it. Inhale, exhale, lower your arm down. Okay, now, raising both arms up, inhale. Now reach, breathe, stretch, 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 and exhale down. Raise your toes off the floor. Lower your toes down. Raise your heel off the floor. Press into your toes. Lower your heel down. Press to your feet. Inhale the arms up. Reach, stretch, stretch. Exhale the arms down with your palms facing up. One on top of the other. Use your mind Use your breath. Inhale your hands up to your heart center. Exhale your hands down. Inhale your hands up. Exhale your hands down. Inhale your hands up. Exhale your hands down. Awareness. Interlace all your fingers. Inhale your hands up. Now rotate and move the palms and hands out away from you. Feel that. Now feel this in your shoulders. Inhale your arms up. Exhale the arms down. Inhale the arms up. Exhale the arms down. Inhale up. Exhale the arms down. Shake out your hands. Awareness and movement. Awareness and how we, how we do things. So with all these different beliefs, Einstein believe. Yeah. What did Einstein believe? And, uh, Again, the disclaimer is, you don't have to agree with these beliefs. These are Einstein's beliefs and other, others' beliefs. You get to keep your own beliefs. But to expose yourself to different religions, to different thoughts, is expanding. So that's good. So let's see how this works out. Now, I get a little excited when I read these, so please allow, allow me. When Einstein gave lectures at the U.S., universities, the question students asked him most was, do you believe in God? And he always answered, I believe in the God of Spinoza. Well, that didn't do much for me. What's Spinoza? Spinoza, 17th century uh, 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 a a Jewish or he was a nonconformist. He was a dissenter of the established church and dogma, and they labeled him a heretic. He was a follower of Rene Descartes, 
was this free thinkers movement. And that's what he was. And he was ridiculed for it. So, when I say, what did Einstein believe? Einstein said, I believe in the God of Spinoza. According to Spinoza, God would say, stop praying. I want you to go out into the world and enjoy your life. I want you to sing, have fun, and enjoy everything I've made for you. Stop going into those dark, cold temples that you built yourself and saying they're my house. My house is in the mountains, in the woods, rivers, lakes, and beaches. There's where I live, and there's where I express my love for you. Stop blaming me for your miserable life. I never told you there was anything wrong with you or that you were a sinner or that you, your sexuality was a bad thing. Sex is a gift I've given you and with which you can express your love, your ecstasy, your joy. Don't blame me for everything that others made you believe. Stop reading alleged sacred scriptures. They have nothing to do with me. If you can't read me in a sunrise, in a landscape, the look in your friends, in your son's eyes, you will find me in no book. Stop asking me. Will you tell me how to do my job? Stop being so scared of me. I do not judge you or criticize you, nor get angry or bothered. I am pure love. Stop asking for forgiveness. There's nothing to forgive. If I made you, I filled you with passions, limitations, pleasures, feelings, needs, inconsistency, and best of all, free will. Why would I blame you if you respond to something I put in you? How could I punish you for being the way you are? If I'm the one who made you, do you think I could create a place to burn all my children who behave badly for the rest of eternity? What God, what kind of God would that be? Respect your peers. And don't give what you don't want for yourself. All I ask is that you pay attention in your life. Alertness is your guide. My beloved, this life is not a test, not a step on the way, not a rehearsal, not a prelude to paradise. The life is only thing, this life is the only thing here and now. And it is all you need. I have set you absolutely free. No prizes, no punishments, no sins or virtues. No one cares a, carries a marker. No one keeps a record. You are absolutely free to create your own life. It's you who creates heaven or hell. Live as if there is nothing beyond this life. If there is, your only chance to enjoy, to love, to exist. When will you have enjoyed the opportunity I gave you? And if there is an afterlife, rest assured that I won't ask you if you behave right or wrong. I'll ask, did you like it? Did you have fun? What did you enjoy the most? What did you learn? Stop believing in me. Believing is assuming, guessing, imagining. I don't want you to believe in me. I want you to believe in you. I want you to feel me when you kiss your beloved, when you tuck your little girl in, when you caress your dog, when you bathe in the sea. Stop praising me. What kind of egomaniac God do you think I am? I'm bored with being praised. I'm tired of being thanked, feeling grateful. Prove it. By taking care of yourself, your health, your relationships, the world, express your joy. That's the way to praise me. Stop complicating things and repeating as a parrot what you've been taught about me. Why do you need more miracles? So many explanations. The last one, quote, the only thing for sure is that you are here, that you are alive, and this world is full of wonders. I like this.
all the different beliefs that are available. What one believes is a choice. From the 13th century, a Sufi master said this, Beware of confining yourself to a particular belief and denying all else. For much good would elude you. Indeed, the knowledge of reality would elude you. Be in yourself a matter for all forms of belief, for God is too vast and tremendous to be restricted to one belief rather than another. You know, we could end a lot of conflict in the world if we uh, could hear this. But until you're ready to hear it, it's just words. To be restricted to one belief rather than another. So let's summary. Plant your feet on the floor. Feel a groundedness, a connectedness. Place your hands in your lap. Find your breath and breathe the very breath of life. The painting in the Sistine Chapel of the hand of God reaching out to humankind and blowing into the nostrils of humanity the very breath of life. That's the breath we want to breathe. And now relax. And there you are. An inner spaciousness. A place within each and every one of us. Amen. Any questions or answers? There's a question in the back. You, you, church. Amazing grace. <laughs>
you so much. Um, beautiful. Um, Okie dokie. Uh, if this is your first time at Unity, we're glad you're here. We hope that you are finding a place of like-minded people and a place to belong. We teach spiritual tools that can help you no matter what is going on in your life. Generosity is important to us. We will donate $5 to a local charity of your choice. Just write your email on the card in our welcome packet and leave it in our office. We don't want to put you on the spot, but raise your hand and we will bring the welcome packet to you. No? Don't ignore that I said that, apparently. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, any visitors today? Whoa, welcome. Wow. Um, I'm, Yeah, thank you for. <laughs> well, uh, love to see new faces. Thanks for joining us today. Um, yeah, uh, we now have an opportunity to support our spiritual cooperative. Um, if you'd like to donate by credit card, go to our website, unityhillcountry.org, and click on the donate button. Um, please set up an automatic weekly or monthly contribution. Or if you would prefer to mail us checks, please mail them to Unity of the Hill Country, 1016 Jefferson Street in Kerrville, Texas, 78028. We thank you in advance for your generosity. Um, please bless our, your offering now and let us say our offering affirmation together. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I send it forth with my blessings and my love. hearts in gratitude for these freely given donations. We send these gifts forward through our congregation and into the world, blessing all that it affects. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so now we have some announcements. Um, the Power versus Force book study meets the first and third Mondays of the month, and it resumes tomorrow. No, sorry. no, 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 no. Next week, Monday, October 17th at 2 p.m. This group will be wrapping up in a few weeks, so stay tuned for our next book study. And I'm really excited about this. A Course in Miracles workshop facilitated by Charlie Diggs starts this coming Wednesday, October 12th. This will meet every Wednesday at, oh, at 4 p.m. Okay. <laughs> at 4 p.m. Um, Hal Robinson will be returning on Sunday, October 30th at 2 p.m. to follow up on his last talk he brought on relationships. This talk is called How to Untangle the Mess We Made. 
Um, there are sign-up sheets in the lobby if you are interested in this or a course in miracles. And if you would like an opportunity to serve our community, please be a Sunday host, usher, daily word reader, etc. Um, and then I'm introducing Jack Porter for a very special report. Thank you. Good morning, everybody here and on Facebook Live. Uh, I'm your president of the Board of Trustees, and we have a board meeting every month, and I'm going to give you a summary of our meeting. So, um, our meeting was on September 21st, and I always start out with financials. So our revenues in August were $6,728.90, and our expenses were $10,528.83. So we're approximately seven, uh, 3,799 and point 93 uh, in the whole for the budget. Now this is versus the budget. Good news is that we did not have to dip into our reserves in August. Okay. So we had enough money to carry us over to the next month. So you, every time I report this, it's always per budget, okay? So budgets sometimes are a little bit higher than what our actual, actual numbers are. Okay, so we're grateful for everyone who has contributed to our um, revenues and the friends that support Unity of the Hill Country, so thank you. Uh, update on the T-Loop. Um, this is a device for hearing impaired to provide clear sound directly into your hearing aids, other words. The company who we're, we have uh, hired to do this has reordered a wireless system and they tell us that it will be sometime in uh, um, this month, October. So we're still waiting on the supplies and the installation, but they will make it. We're positive that we will get this. Okay. Uh, our new website is now up and running and is very user friendly. So, yes. <laughs> so, if you haven't been on it, go to our website. Um, as you know, we have a now, I wasn't here last week you know, to give this report because I was un under the weather. My granddaughter gave me a little, a little uh, some cold. So this is already late news, but Melinda Brown started uh, last week, and she's doing a fantastic job. <laughs> <laughs> and we have hired a part-time keeper, um, Melaine, is that right? Yes, thank you. I did it right. <laughs> Arnold, there she's right over here. She will be starting. And Laura Haywood, who uh, is now our bookkeeper, who's leaving, will be training her in our new system. Also, the board has decided to go back to QuickBooks system uh, for a smooth transition to our new bookkeeper. The, the power church that we have is a little bit antiquated and it takes a lot of time and effort to go through the system, so we're changing back to the original QuickBooks for your information. Also, the board has approved to start Abundant Sunday again, okay? So our first Abundant Sunday will be on November the 6th. It's normally on the third week um, of the month, but that's Thanksgiving Day week. So we are going to have a Thanksgiving dinner on November the 6th. We will provide the turkey, the dressing, and the gravy, and the congregation will provide the rest, desserts, vegetables, and so forth. Mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, <laughs> whatever. So we are looking forward to November 6th. We'll have some more information for you on what to bring. We'll have a sign-up sheet, so uh, uh, look forward to that. 
We also are going to, last year we did not do this, but we're going to provide an angel tree for Christmas for a local charity. Uh, Tina will be calling our members to assist her, so she'll be in charge of that. And of course, you just heard Hal Robinson will be here um, on October the 30th at 2 o'clock. We'll follow up on his presentation last time. And the new class, Course of a Miracle, was approved, when con conducted by Charlie Diggs. So, um, and that starts this week. If you have any questions or concerns, please see me or any of the board members. Uh, and blessings to all, and thank you for listening to me today. Thank you, Jack. So glad you're feeling better. Um, okay, we have come to the end of our gathering. Please join us in our peace song, followed by the prayer for protection. <laughs>